Canada is a country in the northern part of North America, bordering the USA as well as the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. With a total area of almost 10 million square kilometers, Canada is the world's second largest country, after Russia and followed by the USA. Canada has a population of about 38 million people. The largest cities are Toronto with more than 2.7 million inhabitants, Montreal with 1.7 million and Calgary with 1.2 million people. Canada's capital city is called Ottawa and with 934,000 inhabitants, it is Canada's fourth largest largest city. As you will find out in this video, Canada has much more to offer than the world's best maple syrup. Many Canadian cities, especially Vancouver, are known for having one of the world's highest quality of life. Canada has two official languages in place, English and French. Especially in Quebec, people speak French. In fact, they speak Canadian French that includes some local varieties. About 67% of the Canadian population is Christian, 24% are atheists, 3.2% are Muslim and 1.5% are Hindu. In Canada, people pay in Canadian dollars. One euro is equivalent to 1.5 Canadian dollar and one US dollar to 1.3 Canadian dollar. The economy of Canada is a highly developed market economy. It has the world's 10th largest GDP behind Brazil and followed by Russia. Canada is considered one of the world's energy superpowers, thanks to its natural resources, especially in gas and petroleum. Moreover, the logging and oil industries are two of Canada's most important ones. As in many developed economies, many people work in the service industry. In fact, 75% of the Canadian workforce is employed in it. With the world's longest coastline, Canada has the 8th largest commercial fishing and seafood industry in the world. Canada is also known for being one of the world's least corrupt countries and has a highly globalized economy in spite of the fact that Canada has just one neighboring country. Also, Canada is part of NATO. Later in this video, there will be an interview with Tine Wade, who runs a YouTube channel called TNU TV. She moved to Canada in September 2019 and will talk about her journey as well as provide useful tips to people who may consider to move to Canada. Thank you, Jason Zotza, for proposing this video. If you have an idea which country I should cover next, please let me know down in the comments. Comments. This video is part of a video series that covers informative facts and the migration procedure of Switzerland, Germany, the USA, Russia, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Indonesia, India, Israel, Thailand, South Africa, Turkey, Japan, Singapore, the Netherlands, Austria, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, Belgium, China, Brazil and Ireland. I've created a dedicated video for every country mentioned. The playlist is linked in the video description as well as in the comments. Maybe I've already added some more countries including your home country, so please make sure to check out the playlist. But let's return to Canada. What are the main advantages of moving to Canada and what needs to be considered? As of the 2015 UN report, Canada ranks 8th among the countries with the largest foreign-born population, ahead of Australia and right after the United Arab Emirates. About 7.8 million people living in Canada were not born there but moved to this country during their lifetime. The biggest foreign-born populations are the Indians with 668,000 residents, the Chinese with 649,000, the Philippines with 588,000 and the Brits with 500,000 people moving in. In terms of percentage of foreign-born population to total population, population, Canada ranks 48th with 21.9%, meaning that 21.9% of the total Canadian population was born abroad. In this statistic, Canada is heading Curacao and is followed by Kazakhstan. What are the advantages of moving to Canada? Canada is probably the best alternative of moving to the USA, since it's not only geographically located close to it, but because the Canadian way of life is quite similar to the US one. At the same time, there are many upsides when it comes to living in Canada. Canadians are described to be friendly, honest and heartwarming people. When I went to Vancouver, I was amazed by how friendly and welcoming everyone was. Even though there are millions of people living in Vancouver, the bus driver personally welcomes passengers when hopping onto the bus. Also, in order to enter the bus, people automatically arrange in a line to make the process of onboarding the bus more efficient and easy. Another advantage is, as mentioned, Canada's economic strength. It's relatively easy to find a good job in one of Canada's many international companies. Another upside is Canada's affordable and high-quality healthcare system, as well as low criminality rates. Furthermore, nature is a considerable upside. There are thousands of kilometers waiting for you to explore. Canada is known as the country with the most lakes worldwide. There are many outdoor activities. If you are a close to nature kind of person, you'll absolutely enjoy your time in Canada. In case you are planning to move to Canada together with your children, you can definitely send them to public school. In the International PISA Education Comparison of 2015, Canada ranks fourth of 71 participating countries. Only Singapore, Hong Kong and Japan can beat that score. Well done, Canada. 
Furthermore, salaries that Canadian workers earn are not as high as in some European countries or the US, but still relatively high. The average Canadian earns 38,000 euros or 45,000 US dollars annually. This makes Canada rank 21st worldwide, following Belgium and followed by the United Kingdom. The median income in Canada is 24,500 euros or 29,000 US dollars, which makes Canada rank 5th worldwide. Only Luxembourg, Norway, Switzerland and the USA have a higher median income. With a median wealth of 94,000 euros or 111,000 US dollars, Canada ranks 9th among all countries worldwide in terms of median wealth per person. Speaking about finances, living in Canada is quite pricey. If you live off 2,000 euros per month in Brussels, Belgium's capital city, you'll need more than 2,350 euros per month to enjoy the same standard of living in Toronto. This means that the cost of living in Toronto is about 18% higher than the cost of living in Brussels. However, the cost of living in rural areas is not as high as in cities. This comes handy if you plan to move to the outskirts of a city or plan to settle down in Canada's uninhabited areas. A one-bedroom apartment in the city of Toronto may quickly cost up to 1,200 euros per month. However, one point to consider is Canada's climate. While temperatures, at least in Toronto, seem to be pleasant with around 25 degrees Celsius in summer and negative 5 degrees in winter, temperatures quickly drop the further north you go. Let's continue with interviewing Tinoade. Tinoade, when did you move to Canada and which city did you move to? I moved to Canada September 2019 and I moved to the city of Toronto. Why Canada? Well, this is because Canada offered the opportunity of skilled worker mig workers migrating as a permanent resident. I considered moving to Australia, but I have a sibling in Canada, so I, did, I chose Canada instead. What do you enjoy most about your life in Canada? I would say Canada is a, you know, a very diverse, a country with very diverse people, right? And so I have been able to experience new culture, new ways of doing things, right? And Canada offers good opportunities for my career path. What do you miss most about Nigeria? Definitely the food, you know, nightlife in Lagos, and the music, definitely. How are the Canadians like? Well, Canadians are very diverse people and they are very friendly. Trust me, you would, you would love living here. What advice would you give people who want to move to Canada? Okay, I would say you should do your research. Do a lot, a whole lot of research, right? Find out the province that will be, you know, beneficial to you and the province that will suit you. The province that would be, you know, good for your, you know, long time career goal. If you're thinking of schooling or, you know, job opportunities, just find out the province that would offer you the best, you know, best opportunities as regards to what you're moving to Canada for. If you could decide again, would you still move to Canada? Yes, definitely. Moving to Canada for me was the best decision at that point. And so far, I have enjoyed my stay here. Thanks, Tinoade, for taking time to join this interview. Please check out her channel in order to get more information about what life in Canada looks like. What needs to be done in order to move to Canada? Citizens of the European Union, Mexico, the USA, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea and some other countries are permitted to visit Canada without a visa for a whopping 180 days. In order to acquire the Canadian citizenship, you must fulfill the following requirements. You must be a permanent resident, have lived in Canada for three out of the last five years, have filed your taxes if you need to, a test on your rights, responsibilities and knowledge of Canada, as well as prove your language skills in either English or French. I hope that I could provide useful information about the Canadian country and the process of migrating to it. Please let me know which country I should cover next and don't forget to check out the playlist where you'll find more videos targeting other countries around the globe. Thanks for watching.